Dubai, welcome back to Love and Dubai Show. Our top story today, job alert with Emirates. They are scouring the world for new crew. We'll also be talking about Dubai residents worry as rent prices rise across the city. The fabulous news that Manal Rostam is the first ever Egyptian woman to summit Mount Everest. And we'll also be talking about Dubai is getting its very own real, uh, real estate reality show and it's airing next week. Which means we have so much summer watching coming us. We have Real Housewives, we have the reality show Love Island is coming back. Uh, but before we get into all of that, want your thoughts on a story. Which story, Casey? Um, so this is like international news, but it's a story from India. Um, so maybe you have some like cultural references that you can help us with. Maybe mm. a, um, a couple grandparents are suing their kids. No, sorry. No, they are not grandparents yet. Yeah, that's the problem. Mm. They're suing their kids. Be- or they're suing their son and his wife. because they, he has not produced a grandchild. Wow, I mean, that is so typical. I'm not even <laughs> shocked one bit. Really? Yeah, no. They're saying it for like 500K, their son. 500,000 rupees? No, like 500, 000, $650,000. Oh, that is insane. But I just, I get the, I mean, in India, it is so uh, common, like you, the want and need and desire for a grandchild a yeah a little baby it's like insane and i think it's all over the world like if you saw selling sunsets recently you would see like uh jason's mom she was like i want to get married fast i want to have a grandchild i want to have some i want an heir to this whole empire that you've started which is the oppenheim group so it's like so common um, all around the world so common <laughs> well these parents um Sanjeev and Sadana Prasad, 61 and 57, they basically put their son through pilot training and they gave him and his wife a lavish wedding, I guess expecting a grandkid. Now, six years later, no grandkid is there. Now, we don't know anything about potential medical issues or something. Yeah, All yeah. we know is that uh, the family, um, they're calling it mental harassment. in this very unusual law case. They're calling it mental harassment because they expected a child to be produced. I guess the woke world, by the way, is yeah. still shouting, you can't make someone have a baby. <laughs> that's what the woke world is shouting right now. Yeah, I mean, we don't like you said, we don't know anything that's going on behind the scenes, uh, like medical conditions and such. But of course, if we put the woke world aside, like you said before the show, it's just like two parents wanting a grandchild. They wanted a grandchild to play with during their retirement. But should the fact that they want a grandchild to play with during their retirement change the lives of their son just because they gave him a monetary value at some point during his life mm. like a nice wedding flash wedding Honestly, and they also looked after him when he lost his job he had a pilot's job and he uh, lost it so for two years they looked after him so they've really financially supported him and they wanted a baby in return You, they ask for so less, you know. But the thing is, like, just suing for such a huge amount is, like, the next step. I mean, it's quite an escalation. It's like, okay, we're having an issue, but let's just escalate it to here. Yeah, it's literally going from zero to... You know, 100 real fast, 100 yeah. 100 million <laughs> dear real yeah. fast. Oh. Yeah, like, I know there's pressure for parents, for, grand, for your parents. Like, we're at that age where parents are like, so... Yalla. This is the time now. I'm free. I've got lots of time. <laughs> um, and it's common. It's around the world. It doesn't matter. Like, look, I have six. We have six in my family. So I'm one of six kids. Mm. Fortunately, now there's been enough grandkids that there isn't that question for my mom. But okay. pre the grandkids, it's all because that's all in her friends talk about at this point. It's like, oh, this is my Eloise. She's six. This is my... <laughs> It's it. And then it's a great conversation. So she really wanted it. But now she's there. There's countless. Do you have a niece called Eloise? Yeah. I love that name. It's a beautiful name. I also have an Eliza. I have so many at this point. Such beautiful <laughs> names. Eloise. And if it was there in Bridgerton. 
Eloise. Eloise. Eloise, Rebecca, and Billy. Cute. And we have Alexandra, Billy, and Eliza. Oh my God, I'm so going to forget some. Naomi. I've met Naomi. Naomi's been on the show. Anyway, so there's a grand flock of grandkids <laughs> in this story, but in general. So your mom's good. She's, she's good. good. And your mom? <clears throat> None yet, but I think we are. Uh, <clears throat> So, uh, speaking of pilots... <laughs> oh, okay. Moving on to our next story. <laughs> jobs alert. Uh, looking forward to that announcement. <laughs> Emirates is scouring the world for a new crew. Uh, the dream job for travelers might just be a few clicks away and Emirates is scouring the globe for a new set of recruits to join its cabin crew. The Dubai airline announced its plans to visit 30 cities over the next six weeks to meet potential candidates in its latest hiring round. Now, Emirates' team will travel from Australia to the UK and dozens of European European cities in between as well uh, as Cairo, Algiers, Tunis and Bahrain and the best bit you don't need a degree for this job. Emirates asks that uh, you have more than a year's experience in hospitality, customer service and a positive attitude. This is the thing about these Emirates roles like they're going around the world and you don't need a degree for a job that will potentially allow you to travel the world. Have you ever thought about working for Emirates? Uh, <clears throat> no I mean yes actually once Many years ago, just seeing the perks of like traveling the world. Yes, yes, I did. I think I've tried it too. So, in terms of thought. perks, what about you? Um, Emirates roles. Oh, like there go- Sorry. Uh, in terms of perks, so in terms of uh, dollar in the bank, mm-hmm. the average salary apparently for a crew with Emirates, according to Salary Explorer, is 13k a month, but it could be between six and 20. Wow. Between six and 20 months, but that includes housing. Yeah. transport right and all of those other benefits have you ever been to the salon and they're like do you have an emirates card you're like no wow it's just always a good time to be in emirates they get discounts all over the city and then obviously when you're traveling you're then you're staying in a hotel and i guess you're and you get an allowance as well when you're in other do you uh, yeah when you're traveling and when you're in the city but before you used to get an allowance given to you when you were there but now you get an allowance given to you at the end of the like with your salary and pay slip ah, so like for some people are it, it is literally a dream job to work with any airline um i just do want to say that when we posted this yesterday it got a lot of um got a lot of feedback and a lot of got a lot of people interested so you can go on to emirates careers if you're interested also people did say why are they not rehiring because mm-hmm. obviously there are a lot of jobs during the pandemic so the fact that they're hiring again is amazing This is not their first hiring round. It's actually their second or third. Uh, But in their initial hiring round post-pandemic, what they did say was they've actually been recalling pilots and cabin crew at that time who stood down. So people who were stood down were recalled in a previous hiring spree. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice to know that people, uh, some people are getting their jobs back and their positions back. So you've never (laughs) dreamed of working for Emirates? It was a fleeting thought, yes. Because I'd like to check if you are. If I meet the requirements. If you meet the requirements. So, have you had a year's experience in hospitality? I actually have. Really? IGCSE. What is that? IGCSE, like you, the exams before IB. Like when you're in a British school, you do IGCSE exams. Yeah. I, it's like A-levels. What do you think hospitality is? No, it was a part of my IGCSE <laughs> okay. curriculum. <laughs> okay, okay, so tick. Simran, to be an, eth- uh, an Emirates cabin crew member, she has the hospitality experience. Do you have yes. a positive attitude? Of course. And a natural ability? Do you not think I have a positive attitude, Casey? Like, what was that question? Moving on. Sorry, Simran. And the natural ability to provide excellent service in a team of in a team environment. Of course. Um, minimum qualification: high school grade 12. It was hard. It was rough, but I managed. Tick. Uh, fluent in written and spoken English. Tick. Uh, you're at least 160 centimeters tall. <clears throat> With heels or without heels. Someone uses a booster seat, so we're level. <laughs> There's just one, <laughs> one thing that I that doesn't get ticked in that criteria, and that's the height. You know, I must say, by the way, so when you when you question the height and the the why for the height, it's actually so you can reach 212 centimeters tall while standing on tiptoes to enable you to reach emergency equipment on all aircraft types. So that's the reason for the height. So we could do a little measuring. I feel like now, as the world is getting more woke. We can just build aircraft that are not so. No, you know, that, like it's, 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 there's a purpose for the height. It's got nothing to do with wokeness. It's just 
No, I mean like we all can, equipment needs to be. Reached. I feel like aircraft builders are to blame for this. Do you struggle, like this isn't a you, do you struggle to put a heavy bag into the overhead compartment? Because if you struggle there, then you're probably going to struggle to be a flight attendant. Yeah, I, I struggle. What about you? Same, yeah, I, struggle. I don't like that. And there's all like, people in your face. But you're nice and face. tall. Nice and tall. <laughs> tall enough. Yeah. Tall I, enough. Yeah. Unlike some. <clears throat> Move on. Uh, the one thing that. joke. It was never her dream. It was for like a fleeting moment, but what, my height is not increasing, but what is, is rent. Now, the Dubai residents worry as rent prices rise across the city. Now, it's a good time to be a landlord, but the same can't be said for tenants. Uh, since the second half of 2021, rent prices have been soaring like wild birds across Dubai. From hotel and residential apartments to villas and studios, rents all over town have shot up by 10% and in some places even more. Rent in Palm and Dubai Marina has surpassed 30%, which is all well above the percentage listed on the Dubai Land Department's RERA uh, rental index. And according to Gulf News, the Palm has just seen a hike of 36%, Jumeirah Park by 25%, and the Lakes by 21%. So the steep incline in rent is a result of an influx of new residents fueling the demand of residential properties. Moreover, the boom in Dubai's residential property market is another factor that adds to rental hikes, giving landlords the leeway to seek more, uh, to seek far more money from their existing renters in high demand areas than the official rental index. Now, uh, popular to contrary belief, summer months in Dubai will not see a drop in rents of residential units. And at this point, even local brokers can confirm that buying a house may be cheaper in the long run in comparison to renting a property on a yearly basis. But of course, if you're looking to dispute your rent, you can uh, contact the Rental Dispute Settlement Center at the Dubai Land Department. And um, they can see exactly what, pers- you know, like they can get in touch with your landlord. <clears throat> and all those steps can be taken from there. Well, this is the thing, because if your landlord is opportunistic in a time when they see that rental prices have increased, then there are rules and the the laws are actually very much with the tenant. So they can only go above, is it what, 5% year on year or something. Um, so if your landlord is increasing it by a crazy amount, you can fight that and you are, it is in your law. Uh, It is the law is by your side as a tenant. And also it's very difficult. So basically what we saw was a massive drop in rent Mm -hmm. during COVID. But now as rents are really uh, increasing to pre-COVID levels for people who got into a specific area at a much cheaper rate, they're seeing the massive rise. However, who's to say here? Because, for example, I actually own an apartment in Dubai. Mm -hmm. I'm now renting an apartment at COVID prices which is below my mortgage level. And I don't want to be that opportunistic landlord that raises it too much, so I didn't. But also as landlords who are paying mortgages, who potentially bought like, you know, you know, there's this like kind of like mean, (laughs) there's this like mean, scary landlord image thing. But at the same time, (laughs) someone's like playing her small violin. I'm just saying. I just wish we all had landlords like Casey, honestly. (laughs) Well, here, that was last year. But look, but I'm just saying that It's a difficult time because rents did dip a lot and now they're kind of going high above what they probably should be. They, they will need to balance out, Yeah. but uh, it's tricky on both sides. I mean, at times like this, you really uh, count your blessings if you're an Emirates Gap and Crew member. and you're Or a uh, teacher in some cases. Teachers, yeah. And if you're in the hospitality industry, because in a lot of those situations, your living scene is kind of sorted. Uh, but <clears throat> of course, rent takes up a majority of one's salary. So with yeah. rent prices increasing, it does cause a lot of distress to many, many residents. But of course, like from what we're seeing online, people are actually understanding. Like they're very much being understanding about the whole thing because for five years, rent has been quite like the increase. It's just been gradual, the increase mm-hmm. on gradual. Like it's been pretty soft. the incline but now that it's suddenly shooting up people are like okay you know what i need to get my hustle on and just make those extra dollars to pay the rent instead of you know like really taking it to the heart and they're trying to find cheaper options and all well, of that. this is the thing i would also if your landlord suggests an increase first of all i would say is this uh, legal the amount that you're suggesting increase and also just like look around because i feel like you know there are, <laughs> this is not a shadow there are 
three bed villas available in Damak Hill 2s for 40k a year. A three bed villa. Now, what are you saying? it's 30 minutes outside of town, but it's a three bed villa for 40k. It's amazing. Whoa. Yeah, but it's, it's a drive. But the thing is, that 40 minutes a in villa? other cities, wow. yeah, and in other cities, that 40 minutes. is totally normal. It's just that we're used to like being like, you in know, the middle of the city. in the middle of everything. Yeah. But, uh, you know, if you have a car, to Mac Hills too, guys. <laughs> Mac Hills too. You heard it here. Um, let's jump into our next story. Also, um, Jonah is fighting your corner here in terms of the requirements. He said, you're very interesting and you should get the Emirates position. Oh my God, Jonah, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> let's jump into our next story. Manal Rostam, a absolutely huge congratulations. She is the first ever Egyptian woman to summit Mount Everest. We are so proud of you right here in love of Dubai. We miss you. We want to have you back on the show. She's, of course, the Dubai-based mountaineer and marathoner uh, who became the first ever Egyptian to successfully climb Mount Everest and to stand on top of the world. She summited on May 16th at 6.30 a.m. and she finally got back to base camp safely. I have goosebumps for her. So happy. Honestly, that is incredible. And in the video she shared, uh, she's with Anu uh, Gurung. who helped her get to the top and who also said his hands were frozen. She says she's the first Egyptian woman to summit Mount Everest as she holds the flag. A 15-year-old dream has finally come true, wow. uh, she wrote, and such a proud moment for Manal and Egyptians. It's just amazing. Yeah. Like It is no ordinary or easy feat. to summit to the uh, Mount Everest. So it is like really incredible, like the, her achievements. It's, it's so amazing. Like we've like chronicled her stories for some time. We've had her on the show and we're so happy, uh, grateful she would come in and share this, this story. Um, but to get to the top of Everest is no easy feat. And it's not just the climb and it's not just the mental preparation. It's the whole shebang, the whole jig bang, <laughs> as you would say. And, you know, she's, uh, she has uh, summited, um, peaks around the world, but this one has always been her dream. Um, she's also, by the way, the founder of Surviving Hijab Facebook group, which is an incredible uh, community for women uh, who choose to wear the hijab and just to like support each other. So she is just an inspiration. Like this, like for her to stand on top of the world as the first ever Egyptian woman to do it, and then to share that story with, um, with women Muslims around the world, it's just phenomenal. So we're so, so proud. A beautiful sight, of course. Not a beautiful, inspiring, to say the least. And it's not e- the Mount Everest. Like people have really struggled with it. A lot of people have not made it. Like just halfway up, they've given up. A lot of people have even passed away trying to uh, make the climb. So this is really so, so, so impressive. Um, And we'll move on to our next story. Now, Dubai is getting its very own real estate reality show and it's airing next week. Now, the real estate market in Dubai has definitely been killing it over the past few months with houses selling for millions. And rent prices increasing. And rent prices <laughs> increasing, of course. Now, um, the city is a real estate playground and because there is a lot of new properties being de- developed annually, Uh, and they're all top-notch stuff, of course, you would see this coming. And if you've been on Netflix recently you've, and you've seen the show Selling Sunsets, like we keep talking about, uh, and you're obsessed with the show, then we have some major news for you. Because Dubai is getting its very own Selling Sunset-inspired reality show based on a local brokerage. Interesting. Uh, Dubai Hustle is what it's called, and it will air on May 23 in two parts, with the second part aiming later this year. I thought it was going to be a whole season. It's only two parts. Oh, man. Uh, with the luxurious life that Dubai promises, and of course, the million dirham worth pro- uh, worthy properties, you know, this show will have a heap of viewers, um, and it's all from house on house. Um, they have been very hush hush about the news, but they did say that the series is divided into two parts, and people can watch it on BBC3 and iPlayer. Oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. This is what I needed. Now, uh, need more juicy information? Well, BBC describes the show as a group of 20-something real estate brokers from across the UK as uh, they try to earn big bucks in this playground with super rich uh, kids. Or did I say super rich kids? Super rich adults, of course. Yeah. With exclusive access to one of the busiest high-end Brit-owned property agencies in the city, House and House, the sun-soaked series will follow young agents as they uh, navigate their way through cutthroat and highly competitive environment and the real estate world. Now, the show will begin production in March 20, uh, 2021. The mar- sorry. 
<laughs> the show began its production back in March 2021 and it'll be airing next month. So, how did we not know? Like, I'm like, how are you shooting these films around Dubai and it's just kept so hush hush? House and House, we've heard of them. They're a, a well established real estate company here in Dubai. Um, how are you keeping this so quiet? And it's airing next week on BBC and no one knew. We got a small, small, tiny hint of it from our guest, Connor. who was just telling us. So, but he works with Bellevue Real Estate, so that's mm. different. So I'm like, is it the same one? Another one in the making? Not sure. That is, you know what? I don't think, I think you, they can just go on with real estate shows in Dubai. A hundred percent. I mean, like, I, like, Selling Sunset for me is, and we said it yesterday, fashion, drama, and amazing houses. And I actually don't, Um, enjoy the drama part of the show. I think mm. it's it's all silly. it's a heap amount of silliness. However, the houses and the fashion are I'm just like in awe, Ooh. and I would love, love, love to see the mansions in Dubai. Like it's one of my favorite things, like just being in like nice areas and just looking from the outside. Exactly. So if I actually get to see inside the really fancy ones that are like done up nicely, like and that have like millionaires already living them, like that's what I really want to see. So I hope that they show us all of that and a little bit of drama of. Because I don't care about the Selling Sunset drama. Yeah. I think it's too catty and contrived. Yeah. But a little bit Ooh, of like bro- yeah. broker drama in Dubai, I'd be all for that. That is so true. Honestly, like the high competitive environment, like they said. And mm-hmm. just like agents fighting it out for the best commission. And then we'll know more about the commission that they are making on the sales. Honestly, I just don't know how that works. Like I want to figure out like how is commission decided? Like, And who pays the commission? Does the buyer pay the like? How does it work? Just I think so. The buyer pays the agent commission. It's within the price tag. So what if you hire an agent to sell your house? Are you not paying the fees to get that house sold? Yeah. So you're paying that fees as well. Yeah. And the buyer is paying the fees as well. The, the buyers. Se- oh no, the buyer is paying. Oh, interesting. I don't know. Right. Like maybe it depends on the deal. We probably. had Con- we had Connor here on the show who asked. sold. The 180 million dirham mansion on the Palm, which was the biggest real estate sale of the year. It got worldwide attention. Should have asked him the basics. Honestly. Never do. Anyway, next one. <sighs> the next. Speaking of money and moolah, Ooh. I want to move into our Arabic word of the day. Oh, yes. Uh, uh. So if you've been joining us, Simran and I are trying to learn Arabic on a very basic level. We want to use keywords to help us kind of like converse yes. without going through school. So this is like, this is where we're learning and we're going to do it on the show because then we can't forget. Exactly. So we'll do a recap first, go through all the previously learned words and then we'll start with a new word. I have to say, last time we tested you and you got all of them right and even this time I've come on and I was like, oh, the last word is help and you just knew it. Yeah. I don't remember these. I really don't. Last time you made it easy. You asked me like, you said the Arabic word and then gave me asked me to translate in English. Okay. Now give me the English words and I'll translate in Arabic. Ah, okay. Words and then we'll oh, with... excuse me. Okay, so English word. I am. I am. Anna. I am. Very close. I, I am. We, did we learn that? Apparently. Uh, I am. Okay, beautiful. Jamila. So I don't, maybe I just wrote that down. Car. Sayara. Nice. Alone. Uh... Mm, I'm just trying to remember Casey's face when she said it. Because I, Simran left me very... Bortokal. No, what is that? Orange. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got the first letter, right? I, I repeated this Bukar. over and over Bukar. again. No, Bukar. because I was like, Simran... Bruka. You're so close. Because she left me. And she always leaves me. Bruhe. Bruhe. Bruhe, yes. Simran left me Bruhe. She Bruhe. always leaves me Bruhe. Youth. Uh, thakia. No. Thaki. No. The youth are Thakia. Uh, Work Thakia, not hard. <laughs> you suggested this word for youth. Remember the guys? Thakia. The guys Th- over there. Thakia is plural. Singular is. No, there's no singular for youth. We didn't go too deep in these words. Okay, it's just the Kia, is it not? No, youth is Shabab. Oh my goodness. Shabab. Smart is the Kia. Right. Help. Can you just turn your laptop a bit this Help. side? Help. 
Ah, uh, we just did this. And you knew it. We just did this. You knew this. it. Oh, uh, <clears throat> can anyone help? Mosaida me. <laughs> it. And today's Arabic word of the day is mal. Money. Money. I thought money was for loose. Uh, I'm just going to pop this on. Malon. It's both. Malon. Malon. Is it malon or mal? Mal. Mal. We're getting words in the guys. It can be mal or it can be flus. I want to. I want to know what on like the you know. Yeah, like those. The, the cool Arabs. Yeah. Okay, no one uses mal. Mal is more for formal Arabic. We don't want the formal. We want the chill, cool. We don't want the formal. You know? Flus. Flus. Okay, flus. Can you spell that for me, please? F L O O S. F L O O S, like floss, but spelled flus. I think okay. it's F U L O O S. Are you telling Ali what, you, what it is? Yeah. Flus. Oh, it's flus. Okay. Flus. Okay, now we need to say it five times. Flus. 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 Now use it in a sentence. I fi- um, Anna find flus Jamila. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> need flus for my Sayara. <laughs> uh, guys, stay tuned. That's with us every day. We do Arabic word of the day. Thank you so much for joining us. Goodbye for me. Goodbye for me.